Huawei Open Class, and it's a great honor to present for Huawei and its clients across the world. Today, I will talk about South Korean 5G status from B2C perspectives. As you see here, the title is How is the 5G user base expanded and revenue increased through consumer services in South Korea? With this title, I'm going to present about 10 minutes. My name is Woody Earl, and I'm a service director at Strategy Analytics. My research area is B2C market of local operators here in South Korea, and I'm also looking at global smartphone market dynamics. Here is today's agenda. We will look at local operators positioning from two viewpoints, pre-5G and post-5G. We will also discuss B2C services and content of three local operators. And then we will look at 5G data pricing and we'll talk about 5G smartphone dynamics. Finally, I will wrap up the slide with some recommendations. This table shows 5G subscriptions per operator in South Korea since April last year. As of end of August 2020, total 5G subscriptions rose to around 8.7 million. I'm guessing as of today, the number might be surpassing 9 million subscriptions. Operators could gain higher monthly 5G subscriptions in August last year and August this year, mostly due to bigger promotional activities and subsidies at the timing of Galaxy Note series launch. Driven by this increase of 5G subscriptions and higher 5G pricing, three operators could post positive annual growth in terms of wireless revenue in the second quarter of 2020. Thinking about cellular subscriptions split among the local MNOs in pre-5G as of first quarter 2019, which reflects 2G through 4G, and post-5G as of second quarter 2020, which reflects 2G through 5G, we spotted two primary trends. First, MNOs have gained their share, mostly driven by increased 5G subscriptions. However, MVNOs have struggled to gather 5G subscribers due to weaker competitive environment with MNOs. Interestingly, subscription splits among three MNOs remained quite similar in pre-5G and post-5G. If we look at 5G only subscription splits, the share per operator looks to be very similar to the result that I just mentioned. Second, as you see from this subscriptions and revenue share among local MNOs, 5G hasn't changed 4G dynamics. Then what actions must operators take to change the, the current dynamics? I will talk about this in the final slides. Regarding 5G-related uh, 5G content strategies, local carriers take on somewhat different approach depending on their internal roadmap. It's either create or partner. Create literally refer refers to creating their own content, like KT in cloud gaming and SK Telecom in AR and VR segment. Partner means building a partnership with outside specialists, like SKT and LGU Plus working with Microsoft and NVIDIA in cloud gaming, and LGU Plus working with global partners in AR and VR segment. Which strategies would be more successful remains to be seen. From slide 7 through slide 9, we will look through B2C services and content offered by three operators. And it, it appears that all of them provide a similar type of services as of today. SK Telecom is offering AR, VR services as well as cloud-based gaming services by partnering with Microsoft called Xbox. While AR services are focused on sightseeing at traditional palaces and bringing K-pop stars big animals or famous game characters, VR service is focused on overseas travel, aiming for users who have planned overseas travel this year but had to cancel their plans due to the corona pandemic. SK Telecom is putting bigger focus on cloud-streamed stream, gaming services by working directly with Microsoft, who is a leading player in both cloud and gaming. In terms of the data usage per each, content segment, as the table on the bottom right corner suggests, the 5G data traffic for VR, video, and gaming increased by 7, 
3.6 and 2.7 times respectively as compared to LTE. The major traffic changes have been that strong lift in VR, video streaming and gaming. I believe that KT and LG U Plus would experience similar level of traffic jump in 5G. Likewise, KT is offering similar VR services and providing OTT and AR-based group video calling service called Nader. KT also provides cloud game service called Gamebox, but this Gamebox service is somewhat different from SK Telecom and LG U Plus as KT is developing their own service platform. Based on own platform strategies instead of global partnership, KT could provide a game service with the lowest service fee by months. Among all local carriers, I believe that LG U Plus is providing more appealing and diversified B2C services and several AR, VR services working on health, teaching, education, and cloud gaming services by partnering with NVIDIA. One point to note about content creation required for 5G leadership would be that LG U Plus is strengthening its global cooperation with external partners such as Qualcomm, Bell Canada, China Telecom, KDDI, and two more content providers in Canada and France in initiating global extended reality content telco alliance. This global partnership is a clear differentiator, enabling LG U Plus to take the lead in 5G content creation in the longer run. Thinking about 5G data plans offered by three local operators, the bottom line is that they offer almost a similar sort of data plans. The plans are mostly comprised of very expensive but unlimited database plans, mostly priced above 80 US dollar. Expensive with 150 gigabyte to 200 gigabyte data plans for 60 US dollars and finally, reasonably priced, but small data-based plans only providing 8 to 9 gigabyte for under 45 US dollars. I believe that users feel the need of one more data plan of something like 20 to 30 gigabyte for 50 US dollars. Considering that one 5G user is on the average consuming 25 to 27 gigabyte data per month for the last couple of months, 20 to 30 gigabyte data plan would be essential for mass market potentially, and it would be key to 5G subscribers' growth in Korea in the next couple of quarters. I can say that 70 to 80 percent of 5G subscribers have been signing up to 80 plus US dollar plans, so I do think this is successful in terms of 5G market growth to happen for mass market. It needs to happen through a combination of lower cost smartphones and more pricing options between the 9 gigabyte and unlimited. Just briefly on 5G smartphone market in South Korea. It is actually Samsung and LG driven market, more likely Samsung dominated market I should say. However, if we look at 5G smartphone penetration within total smartphone shipment in South Korea in second quarter last year versus second quarter this year, the penetration in second quarter this year turned out lower than last year ironically. Last year, South Korea started with only two 5G models, S10 5G from Samsung and V50 from LG, but huge subsidies for promotions have been provided by operators, cutting down the actual expenditure the consumers had to pay. But since then, the financial support has decreased due to profit-related issues of operators, and COVID-19 also affected the consumer purchase. However, I think that 5G penetration will get increased over time as more reasonably priced 5G smartphones and long-awaited 5G iPhones from Apple are hitting the market. I want to point out three proactive recommendations to operators to make more profit and disrupt the long-standing but unchanged market dynamics. First recommendation is to seek for compelling 5G optimized content by obtaining more spectrum. More spectrum would enable operators to provide differentiated services, so each operator is recommended to take a look at their current spectrum allocations and try to secure more spectrum in the upcoming spectrum auction slated in around 2021-2022. Second, 
operators must come up with more appealing and user-friendlier data plans of providing 20 to 30 gigabytes for around 50 US dollars a month. Finally, a third recommendation would be to focus more on B2B applications and enterprise vertical industries because I suspect that B2B segments would give more feasible business opportunities to operators. And with this, millimeter wave spectrum, which most operators are having problems in applying for B2C applications at the moment, would be more efficiently used for B2B purposes, capitalizing on its differentiated characteristics, such as much wider bandwidth, lower latency, higher reliability, and more robust security. We'll touch upon this B2B story in more detail. This is my final slide and I prepare four con conclusions. First, 5G subscriptions in South Korea will exceed 10 million by the close of this year. Second, 5G subscriber growth and higher data plans have helped with operators' revenue growth. Third, for better 5G experience, more compelling data plans and contents are recommended. And finally, for this dip differentiation, operators need to secure more spectrum for compelling content and come up with diversified data plans. Thanks for watching my presentation. Have a great day.